Acute neuro rehabilitation is an, um, it's an intensive rehabilitation, again, multidisciplinary. And again, the patients should be able to handle three hours of therapy. They should be able to tolerate that kind of therapy. Again, the interdisciplinary team means um, a physician, a rehab physician, they are called PMR, physical medicine and rehabilitation physicians. We have OTPT, speech, and then we have, um, you know, the speech language pathologist, they'll also look at the swallowing. Um, and they also, there's a case manager, there's a psychologist who is involved to, uh, de uh, to help them emotionally adjust to their condition. And then there is a social worker, you know, to, after the patient is being discharged, what, you know, what to expect to help them with that transition. And then, you know, the patients get intense therapy, three hours a day, five to six days a week. That is what it uh, involves the acute neuro rehabilitation. And the, again, the pa uh, patients get from cognitive to physical to occupational and all those kind of therapies in a one umbrella. It's an inpatient setting. Uh, that's what they get it. Patient is at the focus. And the, finally, the families are, are helped or families are trained. Let's say if the family cannot handle, then there are paid caregivers who are trained to make that transition from the hospital setting to the home setting um, as much as you know, to their potential. We try to tap into the patient's potential, where they can get. Can they get to walking? Are they going to be at the wheelchair level? Can they be, you know, if the patient is in a wheelchair, can the wheelchair? So home evaluation is also part of uh, acute rehab. You know, the therapists do a home assessment. They go to the patient's home and then they see what kind of bathroom setup they have, what kind of entry they have, you know, um, who is there to help them uh, assist with their care. You know, if the patient needs a lot of physical assistance, then what can we do differently or how can we, train these family members to do what they need to and make some sometimes in you know, a small adaptations somebody who cannot stand and take shower they need a chair or a seat you know that can also help with the energy conservation think about it you know uh, some of the patients who are going through chemo they cannot handle uh, standing and taking shower because even that can cause fatigue so we can get them to um, sit and take shower you know if that kind of in the place I work, um, we have different levels of rehabilitation. Like we provide acute, you know, let's say somebody just had a brain surgery or, you know, brain tumor due to, um, you know, the metastasis or it just, it's a benign one meningioma and the patient, um, they have a surgery, but they are not ready for the acute rehab. Then they get subacute rehab. That means, you know, patients are seen for occupational physical and speech therapy, there's a case manager also, uh, they get less intense therapy. Now, once this person is ready for that kind of intense therapy, we always make a case to um, get them to the next level of intensive rehabilitation. And then they get the intense neuro acute rehab. And uh, let's say the patient is doing well, in, in 10 days or 12 days, the patient has achieved good functional independence, we take them to the home health, you know, we are, our hospital also provides home health therapy. And then from home health, um, let's say if the patient is walking and is able to travel to the hospital for outpatient, it doesn't have to be a hospital, it can be an outpatient setting. They come for the outpatient, that's where my focus, I see patients at an outpatient level typically. And when the patient is doing well with the outpatient therapy, they're very independent, they're able to find their way you know, uh, our outpatient setting is at the third floor. So for me, you know, if um, patients, you know, especially the younger ones, they will always want to ask me, oh, I, I want to get back to driving. So my criteria is, are you able to find your way from the parking lot up to the therapy gym? And can you meet me here, you know, independently without us? I mean, you can ask for help if you cannot find it, but being able to independently walk, problem solve, find your way, um, no fall of, I mean, no fear of falling. If they're at a fall risk, we, could, we do not clear them. Even if you're coming at a wheelchair level, can you push yourself to come? And if it's a spinal cord patient, you know, they are going to be using the wheelchair. Can you find yourself way up here? Push yourself to come to the therapy gym. And then um, 
we help that person to get outpatient at a certain level and then get them back to driving and getting them back in the community. I also help, and if there are younger patients, I help them to figure out, are they able to go back to work? And that's, again, a big, huge topic. Um, you know, it's very separate. And if we think, talk about it, it's going to be forever. <laughs>